subscribers today we're continuing our quick look and review of some of the better 2024 marvel legends figures that have released this year and i'm quickly giving you my thoughts about the brand overall and highlighting some of the places where they've improved and some of the places where i still think they can improve there's been a lot of discussion this year about toy biz and marvel legends and sort of which brand did things better Better. And to me, overall, I think the effort level that is visible on Toy Biz products is still superior. Today, as I pointed out in part one, there's still sort of a lack of sculpt accessories and paint, which kind of makes it feel like they're not up to the Toy Biz standard. Yes, I understand that some of the Toy Biz figures are sort of ugly by today's standards. But one thing that is hard to question with Toy Biz is the level of effort and attention to detail that you got with their figures. You almost never felt like you didn't get your money's worth with Toy Biz. And I think that that is sort of the main point here where yes, the current Marvel Legends type of figure might look better today as expected a decade or two removed from the Toy Biz era. However, what we continue to question is sort of the value that is absent and that's one thing that you always felt with toy biz whether it be with the comics the dioramas the accessories the articulated fingers the paint apps the sculpt it was all there the execution was probably not the greatest overall but boy looking at some of the figures that hold up today like legends still has some way to go. So first up, we have Luke Cage from the Iron Fist 2 pack. One of the things that I really like about this figure immediately is that the clothing have a lot of sculpt to them. So there are a lot of wrinkles in the pants on both the front and back. The pants also have this seam line going down. The borders around the pockets and sort of the jean design have a pretty good thickness to them which I really, really like. So you don't have to use your imagination as much to sort of identify the clothing like you had to do with She-Hulk and Iron Fist in part one. And that was one of my major complaints. The other thing I really like about this guy is the belt and the belt buckle, as well as the belt loops. They are clearly distinguishable from each one of the separate sort of parts. And one of my complaints in the past with Legends is that uh, sometimes when they did these belts, all of the sculpt sort of looked mushed together. So it's really nice to see, you know, such clearly defined sort of sculpt lines from each of the different parts of the clothing. And the t-shirt also has all of these additional layers of sculpt. So it's thicker down here and on the sleeves. The border around the t-shirt looks nice. I believe this is my first time time seeing both these jeans and this shirt. I might be wrong on that, but the boots also have a really good sculpt to them. And there's also a thread pattern below, which is nice. So one of the coolest aspects to me about this figure are the brass knuckles. And what's nice about them is that the letters are nicely defined. The gold paint that they used, I think is proper. It makes it look like real gold, which is nice. And another thing I like about the skin tone with this figure is that they went with a not so shiny coat on top. Sometimes they add like a gloss or a semi gloss, which really makes the skin look overly shiny. But with this one, I think they did a really good job with both selecting the skin tone and the finish. He also comes with two other open hands. And as you can see, the fingers are open to various degrees. One's more of a weapon grabbing hand and the other one's more of a 
grabbing hand and the sculpt on these is pretty good. You can see some finger lines, some fingernails, finger separation is good. You will see some QC with some of the additional plastic still visible. So again, an issue I highlighted in part one were the QC issues. All these years later, they still haven't sort of ironed those out. The other thing I really like about the figure is the fact that he comes with two heads. So all of the previous legends, Luke Cage, I believe only came with one. And this one has the serious face and the angry yelling face. And the sculpt on both is really, really nice. The wrinkles in the head, the additional colors to the beard, the eyebrows, the eyes, tongue, the lips, all look really, really good. I've been really impressed lately with a lot of the Legends head sculpts, and it's worth giving them their due for the improvements on their head sculpts, but also the fact that they threw in four in this two pack, two for Iron Fist and two for Luke Cage, which is much appreciated. And the fact that they're all good is definitely a big plus. I also forgot to mention that Luke Cage is pinless, but again, I like the fact that I didn't have to think about it, that I just didn't even think about the pins because they're not there. So kudos to them for doing two pinless figures in a box set. Much like part one, I'm not gonna get into articulation, but I will point out that he is missing the toe hinge. But as you can see, he almost has it all. He has the thigh cut. He has the cut at the waist, the ab crunch. He has the butterfly system in the chest, double jointed elbows. The hands are on a peg and hinge. This guy just almost does it all. You can get some pretty spectacular poses from this guy. The head movement is also pretty good. The more limited head is going to be the yelling face. But I'll tell you right now, this is the best Luke Cage out, hands down. I think they did a really good job all the way around with this guy in terms of execution, the sculpt, the paint, the accessories. You could have probably thrown in, you know, full sets of hands, much like I sort of complained about Cable in part one. I don't like that they just throw in one complete set and then two single hands. I think at a minimum, they should throw in three to four sets with the two heads. So that's something that they still need to improve and work on. They also could have probably thrown in some weapons, but overall, this guy is great. And it goes to show you what a problem proper release looks like when they don't take any shortcuts. Next up is Sakar, and this guy just has a lot of really good sculpt, and in particular, the clothing that he has on and the accent pieces all have a pretty good sculpt to them. The boots, for one, have a lot of visible sort of sculpted in fur, both in the bottom boot part and up around the top, there is thicker sort of fur. The sort of stone plates have a really good sculpt to them as well and the leather that wraps around the boot. The same comments apply to the fur tunic and wrap that goes around his waist. The stone plates, the sort of leather wrap, the fur both at the bottom and the top look really good. The sheath that's attached to the wrap also has a really nice sculpt to it. You can see all of the sort of wrinkle lines in the leather, which is really nice. This sort of strap that goes around the figure is also pretty good. You can see that they put in a lot of wrinkle lines to give it that sort of texture and leather look, which is pretty good. The arm wraps on both hands also look pretty good, as well as the same sort of comments apply to the stone and leather gauntlets on the wrists. So pretty good overall with all of these sort of articles of clothing on this guy. The skin underneath has a lot of muscle sculpted in. You'll also see this tattoo or marking on the figure, which I think is printed on and looks pretty good. You will see some QC issues on mine. This is sort of some brown that's bleeding through. It's not dirt. But again, as far as the clothing and the sort of muscle sculpt goes, this is sort of par for the course with Legends. They do just a really good job, I think, with giving you a a good sort of base 
Hulk. Most of them have just the right sort of amount of muscle. The muscle isn't overly done. To me, the only thing is that I would like to see them make them a little bit bigger. And that, to me, I think is a style preference. But I would like to see a Hulk sort of the same size from the Marvel Select Hulks. But this guy is just absolutely fantastic. And what's cool about this guy is that he comes with two head sculpts and both of them just are fantastic. The facial expressions, all of the sort of detail in the face muscles, the eyes, the eyebrows. This one has really nice sculpted teeth and that's something you don't really see with Legends. The Luke Cage teeth were also pretty good. I forgot to mention that. They're better than I'm accustomed to seeing from Legends. Sometimes the quality control might get in the way of the execution of the teeth, but overall I think they're getting better at them. At least that's sort of my perception of it. The hair sculpt, this sort of wind-blown hair sculpt, the hair looks a little mushed, but overall, from a distance, it looks great, especially on the figure. The same comments apply to the hair down version. Both head sculpts are absolutely fantastic. I'm almost tempted to buy two, especially if he goes on discount just so that I can display one with both head sculpts. And he comes with two fists. Again, you see the QC issues with that additional plastic line going across, but the fingernails on the fists that are visible are pretty good. There's good separation on the fingers so they don't look smushed together. He also comes with a set of grab hands and the fingernail sculpt also looks pretty good on this one. You will see some lines in the thumbs and on the fingers on this one, which is nice to see. This one also has good finger separation, which is great. So he also comes with two swords, this smaller one with this nicely sculpted stone handle and the nice leather wrap and the sort of spikes, which I believe might be either musks, bone, or or wood. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but the blade looks good. They've added four different paint apps to this weapon alone, which is kind of rare. The blade has a silver, the stone has a different gray, the wrap has a color to it, and this piece has a different color. So that's pretty nice. Overall, it looks great. He also comes with this longer stone blade, and the stone blade portion looks really, really neat. Like, it looks like a slab. All it's missing Missing is a wash and it'll really give the appearance that it is like a piece of rock or a piece of stone. Bottom portion of the sword and the handle look really really nice. So there's a lot of detail here. Of course you see all of the detail in the wrap. So overall, I'll say it again, this is another Legends figure that sort of represents what the Legends team can put out. So the only thing that I think is missing that would make this figure almost perfect besides my personal preference of having this guy be bigger is a wash. So a wash could have been used everywhere on the clothing articles of this figure, on the weapons, and throughout the body. And this guy would have been close to being just a complete home run for Legends. As is, it's really, really good. And adding a wash yourself will go a long way. QC issues still need to be worked out. They've been doing this for quite some time. There's really no excuse for them at this point. So next up we have Superior Spider-Man and this guy is just simply fantastic. So I'll say it again. The one thing I've sort of been asking for with Legends for a long time is a sort of unique accessories and just going out there and putting stuff out there that is just fun and different and sort of not run-of-the-mill hands effects and just so much reuse, right? Especially with the legs on a lot of figures. But one of the things that I was so happy to see that came with this figure in the alternate head was that sort of small, simple detail in the eyes that they tried to sort of make it look like there were buildings that he was sort of webbing through. Now, the sort of execution of it isn't sort of quite there yet, but the thought of 
just putting buildings in the eye lenses and having that be sort of a reflection of what the head is seeing is just brilliant and it goes to show you the level of impact that such a small detail can make and that alone I think is worth the price of admission on this figure. My only thing is I wish that the non-building head sculpt would have just more of an expression to it so they both kind of sort of have this expressionless face and it would have been great if this one would have had the second head sculpt or if one of them would have a visible sort of expression to it maybe a surprise face I don't believe I've seen that from legends but overall two head sculpts great to see. So this being Superior Spider-Man, Legends threw in this sort of backpack and the spider arms. And this piece that the arms attach to is really nice. The sculpt is nice and sharp. The lines are sort of nice and clear and doesn't look cheap. With the arms, there's 16 individual pieces and each one of them ports in to a peg. So you can spin these 360 degrees at each one of the peg in points and they hold in place well enough if you sort of have them standing up when they are attached to the figure they kind of don't stay in place well but they definitely look cool he also comes with the arm backpack without the holes and this one looks great as well I have some issues with the figure itself namely you see the same sort of reused legs that I said in part one that I was sort of tired of and up top this is an issue I haven't highlighted in either video but I hate how they almost never sort of match the paint on this hinge piece with the outer sort of color so this I think needed to be black I think black would have been the more appropriate color here the red isn't as bad as I've seen on some of the figures it kind of blends into the other red but I think black would have hidden sort of that articulation piece cut better but the rest of the figure overall is pretty good this one has all the articulation you could ever ask for in the spider-man figure I don't think they missed anything with this guy so besides the legs the rest of the suit is in this black so I like the upper portion of the suit better the gauntlets have a really nice sculpt to them the upper upper portion of the suit has the printed on spider and webs and although it's being sort of washed out by the camera the web design on both the mask and the upper portion of the suit look really really good and these web lines definitely look better than web lines I've gotten with their Spider-Man figures in the past. So he comes with two sets of hands. He comes with a fisted set, which has a pretty good sculpt to it. The fingers have nice separation between them. The red that has been painted on the gloves looks nice. It's not sort of sloppy red paint that they've added. He also comes with the web shooting set. And this one, the execution is not as good, not as sharp. It's still pretty good, especially for Legends. You'll see more texture come through on this one and some finger lines on the bottoms of the fingers the sculpt overall is pretty good so overall the figure is pretty good despite the sort of issues I highlighted with the same sort of reused legs and sort of not much happening in the bottom half of the figure I just think they need to do more to sort of spruce up the lower portion of their figures same thing I think you can say with their feet on sort of these suited bucks they are just sort of plain much like they were with iron fist that can be solved with just adding more sculpt more texture to the feet themselves but overall I'm pretty impressed with the overall package of this figure both in terms with this unique sort of head sculpt and the spider arms I did not pick up the iron spider from Marvel Legends because I have the amazing Yamaguchi one and 
no matter what people say, you're not going to beat the paint job on that one or the sculpt, in my opinion. So there was no point for me to sort of pick up an inferior version of that figure. But I will say that I do like the arm system. And if this is what's on there, it worked out pretty well. This is another great sort of figure by Legends and one to definitely not miss out on because I think it will be hard to improve besides sort of them updating their legs. It's pretty, pretty good. So last but not least, we have Ghost Rider. And this figure just simply looks fantastic. So a lot of the issues I've sort of been complaining about in this two-part series kind of go away with this figure. And from my perspective, what Hasbro has been doing over the past two or three years is they've been sort of trying to get out of the Toy Biz shadow. And they've been sort of going after the figures from my perspective that Toy Biz did best and their Series 3 Ghost Rider wasn't necessarily great but you could see with that figure that they put in a lot of effort in the sculpt, the functionality, especially at that time. Now obviously we're you know all these years removed from there so we expect a better product and I think Hasbro answered the call with this Ghost Rider. So the sculpt on all of the clothing from the the boots to the pants to the jacket all look fantastic so one of the things that I like is that the boot has all of this texture going on the wrinkles and just the overall sculpt looks great and I like how they sculpted it much thicker where it meets the pants so it kind of looks like the pants are going into the boot the pants themselves also have a lot of wrinkles to them and they have detailed back pockets you can see that they included something in that back pocket which is a really nice detail the spiky rings that the figure has throughout so on that boot around the waist and on the gauntlets and on the shoulders are not bad overall they could all just use a wash same thing for this belt chain which is a really nice touch the sculpt on the chain could be a little bit better the larger chain going around does have a better sculpt to it however which is great but overall i'm thoroughly thoroughly impressed with all of the clothing the leather jacket also has a lot of sort of leather texture to it and a different sort of pattern and detail up top in the shoulders the front also has that seam going up and across into the sculpted in collar which also looks nice and up top, I like how they added that translucent flame piece on the neck, which sits right below the head, which looks really good and just adds that much more to the figure when you have the head right above it. The actual head and the head sculpt is really, really good. So they've added these sort of additional paint apps with that yellow sort of orange goldish color around around the skull to sort of highlight all of the sort of curves and features of the skull and I think it looks pretty pretty good the skull itself having had you know a lot of different skull figures the sort of look of it looks pretty pretty good especially in comparison to some of the other skull figures I have from different brands this one has sort of a nice sort of smooth finish smooth feel to it or you can clearly see all of like the different shapes and features of the head so I think they did really good with the skull portion and I like how they added in the squirrels into the eyes as you can see depending on how the light hits it it really gives it this sort of lit luminous sort of feel and look to it and sort of adds a level of realism to the head which I think is just great the translucent flame on top of the sculpt also looks really, really good. The color on it is great. 
So overall, this is probably a top 25 Marvel legend. The only thing being that it needs a wash and probably sculpting a better belt chain because this one looks just a little too mushed together. But otherwise, this is such a fantastic release. The figure alone just has so much value to it. All it needs is just a wash. So he also comes with his lit up chain and the sculpt on this all the way around is pretty good. As you can see, the chain links for the most part have a nice clean crisp sculpt. The flame effect pieces have a pretty decent sculpt to them as well. Love how it goes from this silver into this lit translucent flame piece. Just overall pretty good. So he also comes with four hands. Two being a set of trigger finger hands. The sculpt on these is pretty good. Both different right hands come with the spikes and same comments. It needs a wash but overall the sculpt on the fingers, the texture to the leather gloves, and the separation between the fingers is pretty good overall. Could be a little bit better. For Legends, not bad. So he also comes with a fist and an open hand. Again, you can see a lot of texture on the palm of the glove. So same comments as the first set. Pretty good overall. Finally, we have the Ghost Rider Light. And this thing is awesome all the way around. It's sort of peak value for the price point with both the figure and the bike because of everything it includes and how well they executed what's actually here. So the bike itself comes with three different flame pieces and the flame pieces you can use in different ways but the overall sort of sculpt on both flame pieces one being larger than the other and sort of the paint that they added and just the shapes overall are pretty pretty awesome and they also incorporated this center flame piece which you can pour into the bike to make it do a willy and this piece is also great it has great sculpt to it and of course all three of them have a function to it right so the two larger ones representing sort of flames coming out of the wheels and the smaller center one being the one that lifts up the bike the bike over Overall is just simply fantastic. So starting with the wheels, the wheels have a lot of sort of detail to it with the sort of additional yellow color they added there to indicate I think more heat in the tire and the translucentness in the shape of the tire also is pretty awesome. As you can see the bike will also have a lot of sort of mechanical detail in it so the front shocks have all of the sculpt to them. You will see a lot of sort of electrical or bike components where the shocks sort of come out of. Underneath there is more more detail there you will see some more sort of mechanical components and they've added this removable foot peg which ports in and out the foot peg also has an additional black color to it the side panels of the bike look great you'll see a lot of sort of panel lines and angles you'll again see more details in the back in that drum and also in this piece you'll see some more mechanical engine details in these holes on the side which is pretty nice on the top of the bike you'll see some more detail you'll see a nice textured seat you'll also see more detail on the side and on top of the tank with this gauge and then with these three amazing gauges with the number and the flame detail just a really really fantastic touch there in the gauges you can see that it reads the miles per hour, the fuel level, and the RPMs. The handlebars also have a nice sculpt to them. They have a textured grip around them. The brake lever and the brake lines have a really nice sculpt to them. The front windshield of the bike, you can see all of the damage that they've incorporated in with the sort of gashes and scratches and sort of pitted metal look that they gave to this. It is really, really nice. I saw someone add paper behind the eyes to sort of make it more accurate and make the eyes yellow. So that's something you can do. That's something that I think Legends could have added like a piece of plastic, a piece of 
translucent plastic here, which would have helped complete the look on this. So overall, this Ghost Rider bike and figure are 10 out of 10 as far as the amount of effort, execution, and detail that they put into both. Is it perfect? No. Are any of the other figures that I said were pretty good, top tier, perfect out of all of the ones that I reviewed today? No. But at the price point, when they put in effort, when the figures are well thought out, as far as accessories, what they come with, the different head sculpts, the different hands, it's hard to beat Legends at that price point, especially because they're the only company doing this. And sure, I would love to see or McFarlane tackle some Marvel figures just to really see what can be done at this price point. But Legends has definitely stepped up their game since Jada has come out and since McFarlane has been, you know, hitting on all cylinders with some of their releases, but especially with their larger items, their bikes, their planes, their vehicles, just the assortment of different things that they're throwing in at this price point. Legends was definitely put in a position where they had to play catch up and they're definitely catching up. And with respect to Toy Biz, they are definitely still trying to catch up to Toy Biz. You can see that they already tackled Galactus Sentinel Giant Man. They didn't put out a better Ultimate Cap in my opinion. They haven't yet put out a better comic book Deadpool in my opinion. The Marvel Legends Deadpool might have sort of a better feel and functionality than the Deadpool I like from Toy Biz, but it's still undefeated. So they still have steps to go to get to the overall sort of value feel and level that I think we got with Toy Biz, but they are definitely stepping it up and that's really good to see and it's evident with some of these figures. So that's going to be all for today. To me, Legends is still behind Toy Biz, but they're slowly but surely replacing Toy Biz figures with better product. So they're heading there. And I said in one of my comments on one of my videos, shout out to you if you've commented on my videos and we've had a conversation. It's always nice to get a different perspective from people than, you know, my lonely thoughts being shared here on camera. But I told someone that Hasbro is sort of fixated on putting out product to get them under the shoe of Toy Biz. And that's certainly what we're seeing. And thankfully, they're delivering on a lot of their sort of figures that Toy Biz reigns supreme on, like this Ghost Rider. That is no longer the case. This is definitely the best bike figure for Danny Catch out and that's ever been put out at this price point. So with all that said, I hope some of it made sense. If it didn't, let me know in the comments. We can chat about it. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to all of my subscribers again. Take it easy. Peace. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Discovery, go at throttle up.